to Small Arm Solutions Crime Series. Today we're looking at the Caltech series. This is actually going to be interesting because the gun you have here is not the one that I shoot. The one that I shoot is actually a 9mm, and the 9mm I don't have here. So we're going to be talking about both of them. Now the reason I did not shoot this one is this is the P32. Now the P32 is 32 automatic and I had absolutely no ammunition in my inventory in 32 automatic. However, I did shoot a 9mm and that one we did shoot. Now Although this probably looks very, very chintzy, and at the time it came out, uh, which was around 1999, it was touted as being one of the smallest carry pistols and lice pistols there was in the industry, the quality actually was not too bad. Um, they did work, and we saw a lot of these. However, we did not see a lot of 32s. We saw more 9mm in the crime labs. And this gun here is still in uh, in production, the 9mm, which is the... Uh, the P11, the P11 did not see, is still in production, and that one there is not is not too bad either. Um, the only problem I really had had with a lot of these is because I have big fingers. Sometimes it's been hard for me to release, to get, you know, to get my finger forward enough to release it, so that can be sort of a problem. So this is made by CNC Industries, Caltech, and is a 32 automatic. Uh, this does have a locking system on it, so you do have a Browning linkless uh, tilting, tilting barrel. Again, double action only. Serial number on the back, you have a polymer uh, frame. Uh, the, side, the slide is 775T6 aircraft grade aluminum. Um, this is not one of those kind of guns that you want to do a lot of target shooting with. Now, it was inexpensive. Some of these guns we see in the crime lab, they're not necessarily bad guns. Um, again, you can't always associate price with quality. Um, the, although these may look bad, they work. Uh, we didn't really have too much of a problem you know, when I would see these weird test fire not working. But you're looking at a magazine of uh, 7 and 8 and 10 plus 1 for the uh, 32. This is a relatively short magazine. You do have longer ones that are more extended. Now this assembly, you have to basically take this thing apart, so we're not going to be taking it apart. Now you have a very light 6.6 uh, .6 ounces. This is a half of a can of soda. It's very, very flat. You're looking at a overall length of 5 inches, a uh, barrel length of 2.68 inches. Uh, this is made of 4140 steel. Uh, the slide again, 776 aircraft grade aluminum, and the frame is made out of polymer, which is the DuPont 80818 Ultra High Impact Polymer, with 0.75 inches and a height of 3.50 inches. So these, there was nothing really special about these. These were, uh, you had the, the standard you know, you know, hemispherical firing pin. Because it does drop down like this, as you do have a shear mark, uh, which would help you identify some of the characteristics that are individual on it. Um, but overall, uh, it wasn't too bad. Now, the gun you're going to see me shooting is the P11. Now, the P11, on the other hand, is a little bit larger, uh, and it also was produced from 1995, and it was discontinued in 2019. You had that one, you had a weight of 17.1 ounces with a length of 5.6 inches, and a barrel length of 3.1 inches, and a height of 4.3 inches. Again, a double action only trigger. Uh, the firing pin spring, a low mass trigger, is what keeps it from firing out a battery. Now, I have done drop testing on these, and I have not, have not had them go off, so that, that's certainly a good thing. But again, we are test firing the 9mm, so we're going to go to the range, and we're going to see how that one shoots. Well, as far as accuracy, the 9mm shot pretty much minute of barn door at uh, 7 yards. Now you can see from the target, they're all off to the left. Now, uh, this is not an adjustable sight, so you get what you get. So this is going to be a more uh, foot away from you type gun. That's not something that you're going to want to take any kind of longer range shots with. Uh, for as far as reliability, it shot well. We didn't have any problems with the reliability. But uh, one of these uh, things we used to see with, uh, with these guns was the interesting was the uh, serial number restorations. Now, because this was an, basically an, an aluminum uh, from, aluminum insert where everything rode, as you can see the serial number that's right here, uh, this actually was fairly easy for us to, uh, to 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 bring back. Now, the serial number was in, was basically engraved in this in this aluminum. So, basically, using certain types of acids uh, and smoothing it down, generally we would we would be able to get them out. Now, serial number restorations are one of those really cool things that uh, you know it's really cool science that we we're able to do it. But it's one of those things that how much difference does it make? Because basically what's going to happen is we will restore this number. Most of the time, the police department and ATF never even ran them. But when they did, it would, they would go back to the factory. The factory would say, okay, this serial number went to this distributor. 
then that distributor would tell you what what uh, gun shop that it went to. Then you go to the gun shop, they pull the 4473, and that would give you the initial purchaser. Most of the time, the initial purchaser is not the one that got it, unless you're in a state that has a pistol permit system, which very few do. Um, you would have no way of tracking it down to who bought it, you know, you know, the actual chain, unless it was the original first person. So it really doesn't help you do all that much. Um, but again, it's one of those things that is really neat, I think, for as far as uh, uh, the science is concerned. The cartridge cases were really cool because they gave good marks on them. This thing had some good scrapes on them, so they, were, they made some good impressions on them. Same, the same with the barrels, a you know, six right barrel. But again, overall, this was not that bad of a gun, even though it doesn't look that great. Uh, they tended to work. Um, again, this particular one here was not shot because I didn't have any ammo. You see, we shot quite a bit out of the uh, the P11, and uh, that one worked relatively well. Caltech is still making guns or making higher quality guns than they did back in the back in the late uh, early 2000s, but overall, not too bad. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you please click like, please subscribe, and even better share.